So I know that we've all heard the term soft glam, right? But is there such a thing as hard glam? <laughs> Can somebody let me know down below? Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we are going to be working with the Natasha Denona Glam Palette, and I am so excited to be bringing this to you guys. When I think of Natasha Denona, I think of those very like high glam, high fashion looks, and I think that this palette is gonna be a really great way to be able to achieve that aesthetic, and I'm very excited because this is the first cool tone palette I have gotten in a long time. Actually, I was looking through my collection before deciding to purchase this, and I really only have one other palette that I would really even consider like more on the cool tone side. So since I didn't really have anything in my collection that I could really compare to this, I thought it would be a great opportunity to sort of broaden my shadow horizons. So this is gonna be what we're working with today. Now, if we haven't met, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on YouTube, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to subscribe. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video for you guys is of course giving you swatches of this palette. I'm gonna go through and do two eye looks and of course giving you my thoughts on this palette and whether or not I think you should add it to your collection. So if that sounds good, let's get right into it. So first before we dig our fingers into this makeup, I just wanted to share with you guys the palette packaging. So it comes in this nice box. It does really kind of like replicate the packaging. Of course, I've gotten my mitts all over this so it's already getting fingerprinty. That's just something that happens with these palettes if you've ever had a Natasha Denona palette. Now this glam palette is one of I think people are calling it a mini, but to me it's like that mid-size, you know, Natasha has some of those like very big palettes that are about 120, 125. This is at the $65 range, and then she has the smaller palettes that are around the $25 range. And honestly, I am very happy with a palette this size. I think that this is really just about like the perfect size where you get a wide variety of shades, but you don't have so much product that you're gonna have this huge palette, especially if you're wanting to travel with something like this. And in all honesty, if you are someone who loves eyeshadow, like those bigger pans, you're probably never gonna go through. Let's just be real. I would rather have a bit smaller price tag, but still have a wide variety of options. In all honesty, I am not one of those people who grabs for a lot of like quads or quints. Um, I just really like to have a large color story to be able to play with. I think that that's just where my like creative brain is at. I just want to have like many options. Now before I was mentioning Natasha Denona's aesthetic or sort of what I think that she's known for and I think that she does a lot of beautiful, like smoky, rich eye looks. And I think that this really is right up that alley. I mean, you're gonna be able to get some beautiful, glamorous, smoky eyes. Of course, you're gonna be able to do something more light and sheer on those days where you're not wanting to like super glam it up or go hard glam, right? I'm gonna seriously do some research on this. Is there a hard glam? Uh, so I really enjoy these shades and I will be honest, I'm not someone that tends to steer towards very cool shades. I tend to go on the neutral warm side or the more colorful side. Uh, but one thing that I love about this is nothing is like that really, really like blue cool. Like actually, I think that the coolest shade in this palette is gonna be this shade right here. And that's really the only one that leans towards that like bluer silvery look. And this is so funny because like, I would say up until after I graduated from high school, I would only wear cool eyeshadows. Like I would wear that very, very blue silver on my eyes. Oh, just thinking about it like makes my heart hurt right now. But I think that this is very wearable cool shades that will be flattering on most skin tones. And you have a beautiful wide variety of mattes. And of course, Natasha Denona's very well-known metallic shades. So those are gonna be a lot of fun to work with. And I do like if you really look close that you know some of these have a little bit of a tonal shift. So of course we have this one here that has that little bit more gold, but it's not like a super yellow gold it's a little it's kind of like a humble gold if you will and then to me when I look at this one here it has a slight hint of khaki sorry guys if I'm like super blinding you then we have a couple that have like a more pinky tone to them you have just some beautiful like mattes that you're gonna be able to work with this one's almost like a dusty gray so nothing is like more of a harsh cool tone and I think that's really gonna be what makes this palette excel if it's great quality which in all honesty that's what I'm expecting from Natasha Denona but to prove it why don't we get into some of those swatches Okay, 
so now that my arms are all like swatched up and sorry I know that like some of these shades probably aren't going to show up that well on my arms just because of my skin tone and here is that shade that I was saying is like the most cool toned in the palette if you guys can see it it does lean a little bit more on the blue side but it's actually like a blue purpley taupe um, I think that these shimmer shades are so pretty and then we've got the last few here that I couldn't quite fit on my arm um, and there's that gold again it's like a humble gold it's not like in your face these are gonna be so much fun to play with, so why don't we get into it? By the way, all I have on my face right now is a little bit of uh, foundation. I didn't wanna go too crazy because I figure I might wanna like clean up afterwards. So I just have the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Stick in the shade Bamboo, and then I just dotted a little bit of concealer on my eyelids just to kinda like hide some of my discoloration. And I always use the shade Almond in Born This Way. Well, I don't always use Born This Way, but when I do, I use Almond. Does that make sense? So I just dusted that lightly with the Hourglass Veil Powder to set it down. And I think what I'm gonna do is go through and just do a very like soft ethereal glam on one side and then we'll go a little bit more like smoky sexy on the other side, just so you can see how versatile this palette really is. And then that way we can just really see how versatile this palette is because obviously most of us aren't going to wanna go full glam, hard glam every day, right? <laughs> Can I please stop using air quotes? Somebody stop me. All right, so for our soft glam look, I'm gonna start off with this crease shade. This is like a really pretty, like hazy, cool brown. This is actually picking up on my skin darker than I was anticipating, uh, which isn't necessarily like a bad thing. I just, um, I'm kind of surprised how pigmented this is. By the way, I'm using the Sonia G Blender Pro. Okay, with the same brush now, I'm just gonna take this lightest shade, the transition color, and dust that right along the edge of where that lays. And again, for this side, I'm just looking for like a very like soft look, something that you could almost wear every day, but that makes you feel like the better version of you. The one thing that I'm kind of surprised about is this shade is labeled brow bone. Like if you put this shade on your brow bone, let me get a better swatch of this. Um, this is gonna be giving me like uh, early 90s vibes. Can you guys see how shimmery that is? Is that actually picking up? That would be a very, very shimmery brow bone. Um, I'm actually gonna use that on the lid uh, just to kind of get that like more neutral cool tone. Yeah. and I'm using my Sonia G Builder Pro. Okay, and then on the outer lid, I'm gonna go ahead and go through with that, like what I was calling almost more of like a khaki silver. Um, I'm just gonna flip this same brush over and just use the other side. Just in that like outer third. And I am getting just the tiniest bit of fallout with this, which um, does not surprise me with such a like dark shimmery shade. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't go through uh, with all my makeup, which doesn't really bother me at all. Okay, now I'm just gonna like flip my brush back over and just shimmy these two shades together. You guys, I am all about like saving how many brushes that I have to wash, so if I can use the same brush for multiple areas of my eye, I am totally gonna do it. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of that crease shade back in. Yeah, that's so pretty. It's just like nice and soft. And then with the Sonia G Pencil Pro, I'm just gonna take this center shade here. Um, it's actually called Center Eyelid. And that's gonna go on my inner corner. Now you could certainly make these shades super like high gloss reflective by adding um, some Fix Plus to your brush, of course, but the first time I use a palette, I really want to see the quality of the shadows on its own using like a dry brush, but uh, you better believe I'm gonna be trying that next time. 
actually maybe we'll do that on this side just so we can kind of see the finish difference yeah i really like that soft and pretty i will be cleaning up this outer edge and of course adding some lash line once we get the rest of the face on but why don't we go ahead and do this side like i said i'm gonna like amp it up a little bit more do like kind of like a Natasha inspired smoky eye. So to start out with a deep base, I'm actually gonna take this lash line shade and put this all over my lid. I know. Now, when you are working with really dark colors like this to sort of like cut down on the amount of fallout that you're gonna get, cause you probably will get some, but you wanna make sure when you're first laying down that color to just really tap the brush as opposed to swipe it because as you swipe those bristles of course are going to move and like kick up some of that product so i always pat and then swipe to blend Oh, by the way, I used the Wayne Goss number no. six brush for laying down that product. And now I'm gonna go through with the Wayne Goss number no. four just to blur out this edge. Honestly, you guys, the shadow blends so well. You could just do this one color and, you know, use increasingly fluffy brushes to like blend and blend and blend. I mean, that's like the quickest smoky eye ever. Wow. Yeah, I feel like if I wanted to, I could blend this color up to the brow bone. Like it's just going so far, like in a good way. Okay, I've wiped out the excess off that brush and I'm just going back into that original transition shade that we used over here and just dusting that along. I like to almost think of colors like this as erasers um, or like blurring filters. Beautiful. So I did lose a little bit of the intensity of this color closer on my lid just from the blending, which I'm fine with because we're gonna lay shadow over the top. But I mean, pff, that's pretty pigmented and I already like kind of blended a little bit of it away. So I'm very, very impressed. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take my Wayne Goss 18. This is like my ride or die brush. You guys know when I'm laying down shimmers, of course, it's discontinued. If you guys have any brush suggestion that you think would be a good match for this, I'm gonna like pop it up here so like the YouTube community can help a girl out. Um, I love this one. I got this uh, Smith 253 thinking like maybe it would kinda be similar. I mean, not similar, they're very different shapes, but um, there are pros and cons about this one, but I just, I don't like this one as well. So let me know if you have a suggestion. But I went ahead and wet my brush with that outer eyelid shade, and I'm just gonna run this over the entire eyelid. Like I said, I just wanted to get a deeper base underneath this to be able to lay this down. Look, I mean, Wayne, will you please, please bring back this brush? I would honestly probably buy 10 of them. Okay, I'm gonna take that brush that we had that lash line shade on and just blend into crease here. And again, I'm gonna end up cleaning up that outer edge and make it nice and sharp, but I'm very much liking that. Like that to me, I mean, you could really honestly have just done that like one dark shade and then put this one over the top and you'd have a really beautiful smoky eye. Now I am gonna play a little bit, just kind of like creating a bit of a halo with this rosy center eyelid shade and do exactly just that. Put it on the center of my eyelid. You guys know I am team no fingers, but I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then again, what I like to do to blur that edge is just give a little shimmy with the shade that we laid down before. And I like that just like unexpected hint of pink. Let me zoom you guys in like really close. Just gonna add a little bit more of that here. Don't judge the nails. I need to do them again so bad. It's gonna happen tomorrow. 
All right, I'm gonna quickly go ahead and finish up my face, but we'll come back to do some lash line fun together. All right, so the face is done. I just did sweet and simple. I'll give you guys details towards the end of the video if you wanna know what I'm wearing, but let's get back into the eyeshadow because let's face it, that's why you guys are all here. So first off, I'm gonna go back through with that uh, inner corner shade that I had over here, uh, just because when I went through with my concealer, of course, most of it went away. In all honesty, I don't even know why I bother with inner corner before I do concealer because I'm always taking it away. Oh, if my lashes look like completely different, that's because I do have a falsy on this side. Um, I just went through with some of those like old school Kiss magnetic ones where they had like a top and a bottom. Um, I did just order some magnetic lashes and liner to try out, but I just wanted something that I could well, I would say easily pop on, but honestly, I had to do this like three or four times to get it just right. And it's still like, it's about 80% right. But anyway, so I just thought that this look warranted um, a false lash, right? But this one, like I said, if this is gonna be like more of your like office look, I personally probably wouldn't wear lashes. If you love to, then that's amazing. I just wouldn't take the time in the morning, but I do really like this like glam look with a lash. All right, just so we can use more colors in this palette, I'm gonna go through with this smoke shade. This is probably the most like neutral brown in the palette, um, but still like tiptoeing towards cool. And I'm just gonna use that on this lower lash line. And then blend it into the outer V a little bit, just to kind of have some cohesive color. All right, and then I'm wiping the brush off and I'm actually just gonna lay down this uh, blend shade. I probably should have done it the other way. So I'd put the lighter on my brush and then the darker, but I didn't really know where I was going with this. So this way we can just kind of blend everything together. And I really kind of like this because the shade that we put on the inside of the lid and on the inner corner, this transitions almost from like neutral into cool. So I really like that. Like. It's almost like a tonal ombre. And the brush that we used for that was the 02 uh, pencil brush from Wayne Goss. On the other side here, I'm gonna take the 05 pencil brush from Wayne, so this is his smaller brush. I think this is the newer one. Um, and I'm gonna take that lash line shade and just run it underneath. Oh, you guys, this lash is like killing me. I. Uh, I put it on thinking, cause I'm obviously just gonna take it off to go to work. I do have to actually have to go to the salon after this. I thought that it would be easy like after this video to just be able to like pop it off. Then I don't have to worry about any lash glue residue like on my eyelash, but I think it's like poking me in the eye. So if this eye starts to get red, my apologies. And then just for a little shimmer on the inside, I'm gonna take the same color that we used on the outer eyelid and just pop that right here. And then I'm just like basically wrapping that around the eye. Okay, now we're of course gonna put some mascara on the lower lashes. I'll use the same that I used on the top, which is the Hourglass Unlocked. Um, this is Hourglass's newer tubing mascara and I'm really loving it. Okay, we'll pull the hair down real quick just for that like final effect. But before we zoom out, I just wanted you guys to get an up close look. So can you guys see, I really like how this turned out where it's more like neutral and like blurs into cool on that side. That is so pretty. And of course, gotta love a good smoky eye. This is very Natasha Denona to me. Actually, I think she probably would have like gone a little more ham with it, but I do have a new guest coming to the salon today and I don't wanna like scare anybody with too intensive makeup looks. Um, I think I talked in my recent eyeshadow palette tag video that, you know, really as a hairdresser, you get carte blanche with all of your looks, but sometimes it's nice to have something that's, you know, not too overboard when you're just first meeting someone. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and we can do a little bit more chatting about this palette. You guys, you didn't tell me I had like the dreaded white ring. My lips have been so chapped. Like we were eating popcorn the other night and I don't know if it was like the salt from the popcorn, but my lips are really killing me. Okay, I hope you guys don't mind, but I had to take those lashes off. Like, I don't know what it is, but I mean, I felt like they were poking me so bad. And when I looked, 
I couldn't see anything, but let me tell you, those are probably going straight in the garbage because that cannot happen. <laughs> I was like concerned that my eyes were gonna get scratched. Anyway, let's talk about the palette, which is far less dangerous. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the whole like controversy over how Natasha named her shades. And she did name these shades as to where, you know, she would recommend putting them on your eye space. And while I think that there are pros and cons to that, honestly, it doesn't really bother me. The only thing that bothers me as a content creator is you have a couple that are called center eyelid and outer eyelid. So that starts to get pretty confusing. So if anybody ever saw a picture where I want to do a tutorial with this, I would have to like show it because I can't just be like, oh, it's inner corner because there are several inner corners. So granted, that is like a very small percentage of this world, but I do think, you know, if someone is going to be picking up this palette and they're just looking for a really easy to use, like, cool neutral palette. Maybe it is really nice for someone to be able to see some suggestions, especially if, you know, you sort of get a little lost with this many shade opportunities, then this would give you a little bit of a blueprint to follow. And that doesn't bother me at all. I know that Natasha had talked about, you know, having the ability to pop these pans out because these are magnetic. So you just use a pin to push that through. So if you do have any of her other palettes that are this size, you can of course like flip flop between palettes as well. But you know, I probably won't be moving these around. I, like I said, I love options. And so I don't like to like fence myself in as far as where they go. So I really won't even pay attention to that. But I guess I don't really see the big deal about it. I know a lot of people were like getting all up in arms over it, but I don't really see it. If I'm missing something, please let me know down in the comments. If you have a side to this that, you know, that does irritate you, let me know like your thoughts on that and your reasoning. Cause I guess I'm, I'm just kind of missing that. But Thoughts on this palette. I mean, overall, I think that this is super beautiful. I mean, the shimmers in this palette are so creamy. I will say I felt like they applied a little bit softer dry. Um, I am not one to use my fingers. Like I know I did on this side, but usually that's just not something I enjoy using. But if you were to use your fingers, you would get that beautiful buttery blend. But obviously by wetting the shadows, I was able to intensify that look. But the mattes, you guys, I mean, I feel like that darkest matte that we put underneath this blended so beautifully. And really, you could put a little bit of black liner on and then put that lash line shade on and then just kind of, like I said, increasingly use a lighter, fluffier brush, like something to pack it on and something to blur it out and you'd be done. Like one shadow, one liner, two brushes, boom. So I think this is gonna be a great palette to have. And like I said, I am very happy that I picked it up. I think that again, this is gonna be something that while it is a garbage truck, there's nothing like talking about Natasha Denona glam shadows with the ambiance of a garbage truck in the background. Now, I know that I had mentioned that I really only had one palette that I could possibly like compare this one to. And actually that is the old school original naked palette. So if we kind of pair these up together, you guys can see they're really not like that similar, but there are similar like story vibes, I guess. Yeah, as I'm playing around in here, I really don't see anything that's super close. Um, some of the mattes might be kind of similar, but I know that the formulas are really different. So just a little comparison. Um, this is that top left center eyelid shade. And then the one on the far side is the inner corner shade. And then this is Urban Decay Sin and Urban Decay Toasted. So I was just kind of like popping some colors out to try to see. And really the formulas are so different, like especially this like inner corner shade. Um, it's almost like glossy, like wet looking. So very different formulas. So I am, I feel like validated in getting this palette. So go Kelly, because I think that these are very different. Um, I'm honestly really excited to have this palette. I think it's gonna be great going into fall and winter, but also, you know, something that you can very easily pull out for any time that you just want a look that's gonna go with just about anything, because you really can make this a little bit more on the neutral side if you choose to with some of those shades that do shift more towards neutral. I did get quite a few of these used today. So I think we just have like maybe four that we need to play with a little bit more. So let me know if you guys want to see more looks with this palette. I would certainly enjoy doing that for you. I might end up doing a little one for Instagram as well. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. It's Keep Beauty Real. I would love to see you there. And I want to thank you guys for taking the time to spend with me and chatting about this palette. It really means a lot to me when you guys watch my videos because I know our time is such a valuable, precious thing and I really do appreciate it. So I wish you guys the best. Thank you so much. If you did enjoy this, please don't forget to give this video a like. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and I will see you really soon.